I, I was really excited about doing this panel, and, and um, I, I pushed for this because, to me, the, the challenge here is if we ever really want to do anything in space that, that is truly economic um, beyond low Earth orbit or, or at least the moon, you need a propulsion breakthrough, in my opinion. Um, as I found out when I was a kid reading Heinlein's novels, if you can accelerate and decelerate at 1G, you can make it from here to Mars in two days where if you use the chemical propulsion and you take the easy way, you know, it takes you like nine months. So it's like the difference of being able to fly across the, uh, the ocean um, in, a, in a jet versus, you know, taking the contiki um, across the ocean and shedding parts of your raft as you go along. You know, both of them will get you there, you know, eventually, hopefully, um, but one is a lot more commercially viable than, than, than the other. So what's beamed energy propulsion? Well, basically, the power plant is on the ground, all right? The vehicle is simply a power converter, lightweight, could be expendable, it could be reusable, all right? And the, uh, the object of the power converter is to take the beam in and uh, convert it to uh, a thrust and uh, push to orbit or whatever mission you got. Okay. All right, so this is very different than chemical propulsion. I mean, there's a lot of amazing things that have been done here recently with SpaceX, but Frankly, I don't, I don't know if the cost to space will be dropped much more than 10 or 15 percent uh, because it's going to be driven by economics with that price setting, uh, you know, price set at for uh, capturing market share. Um, I think beamed energy propulsion is really the only thing that's going to cut, allow us to cut the cost of access to space by factors of 10, 100, and eventually in the, in the far future, uh, 1,000. There are kind of three ways to use nuclear power uh, for space exploration predominantly. I mean, the first that everybody's probably familiar with is radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, uh, space batteries. These are used plutonium-238 natural decay and convert to electricity. Uh, RTGs have been present in the space program al almost from inception. Uh, the first Apollo mission had RTGs on board, uh, and we've continued to have almost uh, every mission having an RTG. Clearly all the deep spa space missions past Mars are RTG driven. Uh, what we have in the center, what we're focusing on predominantly are two missions. Uh, one is a now a slightly different variation and uses a radioisotope thermal rocket. And so we've essentially dubbed it the Mars Hopper. Uh, we believe we have the ability in a very small craft to hop 10 kilometers every five days on the surface of Mars and carrying a 10 kilogram uh, instrument package. 